you know, try to do it just a little bit of time, okay? It was just a little bit, not too much. <laughs> and I was like, I'll be fine. She was like, don't say you're gonna be fine because you don't know that. I was like, uh, yeah. I was like, I thought these days were over. Like, I Woo, welcome back to Medicine Medicine with Fix. I'm a third year medical student currently on my pediatrics rotation. And for the last week and a half, I am spending my time in the mother and baby unit, better known as newborn nursery. I don't know why I keep doing this to myself, but I do not pack my lunch or make my breakfast at night. So let's get to it. In addition to putting up all of the groceries that I got Sunday Jesus. night and just went to bed instead of putting things up. So let's scurry and get this done before we head out of the house. And left my earrings. I almost turned around to get them, but I'm like, you know what? It's my first day on Mother Baby, and I cannot be late. And we have a 6 38 young sign out. I'm a morning person, but let's be for real. This is a little bit too early for me. Yikes. I just feel like me leaving the house before 6 a.m. and as the sun is rising is kind of wild, and I don't really appreciate it. <laughs> and I'm gonna have to do this for a whole week. Like, y'all. Yeah. This is kind of hard, especially going from last week. I didn't have to be in. The earliest was 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. And this week I have to be there before 6.30 because that's when we sign out. Like one of my friends missed sign out several times and I don't want to do that. So I got to take the super early train since I don't have a car. It's wild. It is so wild. But I'm happy to be here. Happy Monday, y'all. Happy flipping Monday. How is it already so bright? Oh, joy. Monday. I can't tell y'all the amount of times that I have yawned since being here. Not that it's not interesting or anything. It's just that I'm very tired. Slept so like a little bit more than six hours. A mess. But we started with, um, we wound up not having time out because last week they only had three babies. This week they have 12. So the residents were trying to compile all the information. And then we did rounds, talking to the moms or the parents rather, to see if, um, when the caregiver or the the person who delivered the baby when they're supposed to be discharged so we can try to line up the baby with that discharge and then we'll go back later after um what we're doing right now we're in lecture and we're going to do the exam with the attending and there are a couple of circumcisions that have to happen so i'm gonna ask like oh do we get to see this because things that i've learned or like learned about but never got to see so that's pretty cool and the senior resident said that typically before we get 12 so hoping that that's true because I need a nap. Yeah, update you more later. It's good. She was discharged home with instructions to schedule an MRI outpatient. Okay, so I never took a nap and call me silly. Tell me what you want, but it ain't happened. I was just like, you know, if I am this tired, then I should just work through it, right? So I can go to sleep on time tonight. So stand by as to whether I go to sleep on time. I did come home, watch a little bit of TV. I'm actually hungry because I ate lunch at 11 30 this morning. Well, I'm not tripping, it's not a lot. But then I worked on this practice test since we're having a review tonight. So it's two or six. The chick didn't see me, nothing to work on. So are we really meeting? We'll see at six when she says contact me. Um, but it's so nice. Uh, like last week, I was in the bathroom and I started and I had it. And today I took off my jacket. So with a high of 61 degrees and a low of 45 degrees. Morning Chronicles. It looks like I remember to put in earrings today. And I did not go to that review last night because one of my friends was like, mop, mop, mop. It wasn't even really worth it. So I kind of chilled out and I needed that and I deserved it. We've gotten our hand off. Now we're actually gonna go with substitution. So what are some things that you're looking for right off the bat once you go um, through 
Okay, doing this on the go, literally had to run to the restroom because my bladder was just like, we way too full. But how have I been here for less than four hours and it seems like forever? Um, we do discharge at 6.30 and then we each got a baby to discuss today, meaning like a baby's my patient, patients that we discharge stuff. And then we went to morning conference at eight, rounding the like staff with the attending, talking about all the patients and now rounding with the attending, about to go through discharge summaries and have discharge patients, so, but I had to use the restroom. So that's a brief update because we're doing it right now and I need to know how to do it, so stay tuned. Y'all, it is not even um, noon and I'm out. Like, what? I'm about to go home and eat this lunch that's in my hand. I didn't even have to pack this if I'm, you know, even this early. But listen, who complaining? Not me. So, our noon lecture for today is not at noon. It's going to be at one o'clock. So, go home, warm my food up, eat my lunch. Um, low key, listen to why's my watch? Not okay, it won't line up, but I'm gonna listen to um my audiobook because I'm high key about to finish it. It's um, I hate my mother, Jeanette McCurdy, or something like that. It's real interesting though, if you have watched the Nickelodeon series. But back to the reason why we're here I got my first baby today and I got to present on the baby. Just so happened that mine is a discharge patient, so you know, I didn't have to write the note. But tomorrow I'm giving a presentation on hypo and hyperthyroidism, like the hormones, because I stay getting that stuff mixed up. So you have to get evaluated by every team that you work with in peace. And part of our evaluation is to give a presentation, like five to seven minute presentation, because when we were having some downtime, the resident was asking us, what are some topics that y'all want to go over? And I had told her that, and she was like, actually, you present on that tomorrow. And then if you still have some questions, I'll gladly answer them. But I think that that will help you better for the test. Then what I first said back with Weidman and umbilical granuloma. So I'm going to do that because I've been getting this stuff confused since I learned it in block seven. And we don't need no more confusion around here. Either way, it's another nice day. So maybe I'll go for a walk later too. But definitely in the gym. Ta-ta. It's going to have to be like a, a midday walk, if you will. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Yes, 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 good job. All right, so which of the following is the most likely cause of this patient? Symptoms, three-year-old boys brought to the physician because of an arm pain following a fall that took place five hours ago. According to his mother, the boy was running in the yard when he fell and injured his right arm. Boy is crying, clutching his arm. During the past year, he has been brought in four other times for extremity pain, following falls, all of which have been diagnosed as long bone fractures. This looks like this is gonna be OI looking at the sclerosis. Right. Um, but I'ma keep going. Uh, <laughs> he's at the 10th percentile for high, 25th for weight. Temperature, a febrile, pulse normal, respirations normal, blood pressure normal, right forearm is diffusely erythematous. Patient with drowsy yells when his forearm is touched. His left arm has two small ecchymotic regions overlying the elbow and wrist. A photograph his eyes is shown. X -ray the right forearm shows a transverse me an ulnar fracture with fusely decreased bone density, which bone most likely cause of this patient's symptoms. It's a collagen defects. Collagen one. There you go. Here you go. Here you go. Here you Man, look, it is day three of having to get up anytime between five and five ten, and I'm tired. I'm sick of it. I'm exhausted. This is the level of brightness that it is at this this hour of day. Now the train decides that it wanna come like five minutes early and I'm moving these little legs as fast as they can go. Because seriously, what the heck? <sighs> I have a presentation today on congenital hypo and hyperthyroidism. And I ain't even worked on it yet because I was so tired. Like when I come home, my hours are limited because I gotta be in the bed by nine and sleep no later than 9.30. This is crazy, but we doing our best.
All right, hey y'all, I have left campus, left my noon didactics to come home. I was supposed to take a nap. Did it happen? Because I am like a toddler. And that means that I fight my sleep, Ugh. But here we are, I'm getting ready to go back to campus for the Urban Health Program Tri Campus Award Ceremony, where um, this program was founded to support black medical students at the University of Illinois College of Medicine on the Chicago, Peoria, and Rockford campuses. And so tonight, all of our efforts will be acknowledged across all three campuses. We will be live at our locations and streaming over Zoom so we can see each campus as they award the fellow students who are definitely worthy of honor and recognition. So it's, I am so happy to get this first medical school award, which will be the first of many because I do a lot and it's nice to let my efforts be acknowledged and honored. So you'll also get to see my friend Anne, who has shown up on my channel a lot, but that is my study partner, my road dog, who we be helping each other get through all these rotations. So you'll see that in live time and then there'll be a dinner afterwards of which then I will come home and start back over tomorrow because you know I wake up between 5 and 5, 10 in the morning. So there's that but let's get it going back to campus let's go and oh yeah i put on a little bit of makeup you know try to do it just a little bit of time okay it's just a little bit not too much <laughs> bye y'all all right so just really quick um miss john the potential to be a future leader over the past academic year through demonstration of leadership and willingness to contribute and share knowledge and ideas with others now um just so that you all know all of the awards that the students are receiving were nominated from your peers so everyone that got an award your students are the ones that selected you so they see the things the great things you guys are doing um so you guys should be proud of that so our recipient of the emerging leader award I'm going to read a little blurb uh, that Vicki gave us, and you might also say a few words. So Vicki is a first-generation medical student from the South Side of Chicago. She's interested in women's health, creating better access to health care, dismantling health disparities, and diversity, equity, inclusion, and initiatives within medicine. As a non-traditional student, she not only advocates for herself, but also for her peers. She's quick to share resources with others because she understands that there is enough for them to take with everyone and drive and be successful. The future goal is to open free plan on the south side of Chicago to provide care to marginalized communities because quality and affordable health care is the foundation for the life. Awesome. Thanks for recognizing me as an emerging leader, but also beyond awards and everything. Medical school is hard, and it's not a lot of us, people who look like us, black and brown students in medicine. So it's very important to share any resource that you have. Team, no gatekeeping. If you know something, say something. Like they say at the airport, you see something, say something. If you know something, share it. Make the load lighter for the person coming be behind you because uh, it has not been an easy road thus far. And it don't look like it's gonna get easier, but when we share things around, that does make it feel a little bit better. And the community, so thanks. Oh, we got the awards because we did what? That. We did that. Okay, is that so? <laughs> Period. And now it's bedtime, so, all right. Catch you tomorrow, me. Bye. Oh, and my little plate to go. Woo, make sure to go. Okay, yesterday I did not open up to see what's in my bag. So I'm gonna do it with y'all. All right, first things first. Obviously, I knew it was gonna be an umbrella because I could see the, the hook for it. And it says Department of Medicine. Oh, it's blue and red. Cool, a Department of Medicine umbrella. Looks like we have a little lunch bag. LOL, this is now gonna be like my third or fourth lunch bag, but need different shapes and sizes. What else is in here? Oh, we got these during orientation. It is a portable charger, I believe, but I don't know how this will work. I don't have anything that takes these. The only thing I charge with the USB, I actually don't need anything, but I have a few things I could use to charge with this, so that's cool. I like the red. So I think in orientation, it was black, which was not cute, it was real bland. And then the last thing was my award, so yeah. We got the award for the Emerging Leader. Yeah, so it's a peer nominated award. Shout out to all my friends who nominated me. And yeah, it was really nice to see the things like my friends that they nominated me had sent me what they wrote. And I was like, oh my gosh, you really appreciate the work that I've done. And that was nice to see and hear. So today was day four of newborn nursery, i.e. mother baby unit. And Honestly, I ain't record nothing because y'all, getting up between 5 and 5, 10 a.m. is beating my behind. It has been very, very difficult. So it's the normal, we do sign out at 6.30 in the morning. 
It was super fast, but there was an epic, which is our medical record system, update overnight. And so it messed up the way they were like um, adding babies to the schedule. They had added kids to like the peak schedule. It was like, these are newborns. It was weird. And then after that, the resident asked if we were okay with each handling two babies today because all week we've only had one baby. And so we were all like, yeah, that's cool. Both my babies were being discharged. And so that's discharge teaching. The first discharge, I was not ready for the teaching because I left my paper in the room and she asked me to do the discharge teaching. And I was like, oh, I'm not really ready for that. So I felt bad because I'm just like, uh, I like to shine when my resident asked me to do something. And so after we saw that patient, I went back to the room to go get my other papers so I could do the discharge teaching for the next baby and so things that we tell them is like okay once they get discharged baby needs to be fed every one to four hours that means like they should get at least a minimum of eight feet a day or eight feet within every 24 hour period and if it extends past that because baby is sleeping you don't want to wake them up you need to just wake them up because they need to eat they need this nutrition to grow whether you're breastfeeding or bottle feeding you can you have to pick up some vitamin d drops from a convenience store like target walmart walgreens cvs and it's about one ml of vitamin d you'll drop that into one bottle daily helps you know um for their vitamin d because they're not getting enough of that and we need vitamin d to grow strong bones you know and to prevent rickets um which is the bowing of the legs and then they after or by day four baby should be peeing at least four times a day and then still Stooling. Some babies stool just once a day, once every other day, and some seem like they're pooping every single day or all day, and that's fine. That's not abnormal. Babies should be sleeping in a bassinet or a crib next to you. Do not have the baby laying in the bed with you because you can roll over them. Have them swaddled and nothing in the crib with them. No extra blankets, no extra pillows because they don't have control over their neck. And you want to prevent sudden infant death syndrome, which is SIDS. Um, I'm trying to see if I can do all this off the top of my head without going to my book bag to get the paper. Let's see, SIDS. I think next is, oh, the umbilical cord. It should come off within two weeks. And until then, just give them a sponge bath, no submersion baths just yet. And then once it falls off, give it about two days or so until you see the hole completely closed. If it's not closing on, that, on its own, you could come in and doctors have like a technique that they can do to help close the umbilicus. And so you wanna keep that area dry. And after that has happened, then you can give them a submerged bath. But also if the baby gets a circumcision, you want them to um, wait till whichever one heals last, wait an additional two to three days before giving a submerged bath. And so for the danger zone, if baby feels warm, decrease feed, and they're acting a little different, you want to take their temperature and the best way to take a temperature of a baby is through the rectum because that's the most accurate if you see anything at 100 or higher immediately go to the emergency room if you also see baby um, breathing really really fast with their stomach is going in and out or they turn blue then that's another reason to take them immediately to the emergency room we would be fearful of like any type of infection or like sepsis which is an infection so then I asked like do you have any questions so that was cool I got to do that today and so we round once with our team then we go back and we try to write our notes and then you round with the attending later in between time the attending had one circumcision to do which was on one of my babies i asked if i could go in for the circumcision yesterday i didn't get to go so today i got to go before it happened she was like okay if you feel faint or anything you feel nauseous there's a seat right there sit down because i cannot help you i was like yeah yeah of course like your patient is the baby i understand and i was like i'll be fine she's like don't say you're gonna be fine because you don't know that i'll be like uh i passed out the first time i saw surgery and that was years ago i was a freshman in college like i'll be fine and yeah I was like, I thought these days were over. Like, I've been in the OR, I've seen surgeries now. I've been, you know, like participating in surgeries. Why my body gets so hot? Like, I felt things. I thought I was going to pass out. And I genuinely think it's because I was dehydrated. I barely got any water this morning. All the moms had the, or the parents had their rooms really, really hot. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna take it off my jacket. And yeah, I got so hot that I was like, I need a chair. And I sat down and then the nurse was like, do you need water, do you need ice, what do you need? I'm like, oh, I need, I need just water, it's fine. She comes back with ice water and an ice pack and the doctor was like, oh, you can sit your chair in, in the hallway? But I'm like, no, cause I wanna finish this. So I sat there, drank the whole thing of water and I sat down and like, it felt like forever from the time the nurse left the room to go get that stuff until she came back. It probably was less than two minutes, but it felt like a lifetime because I was literally, uh, I was about to have a syncopal episode, okay? I was about to pass out. After she did that, I stood back up, went back over to the baby to finish seeing the circumcision, and she was like, no, you can sit down. I was like, no, I'm fine. She was like, no, sit down. I was like, no, I'm 
I'm fine. So I wound up seeing the very, very end of it. What's crazy is that it, like, it wasn't super bloody. It wasn't gruesome or anything at all. I literally was just dehydrated and I was so embarrassed. But something about peds, they're like, everything you heard about them is true. They're super nice. Everyone was very caring. And residents were like, don't be embarrassed about that. It's happened to me. You, won't, you don't even want to know how many times it's happened to me intern here. I'm just like, oh my gosh, thanks. And when I went in the room and told them, because they saw me with the ice pack, the residents immediately were just like, oh my gosh, do you need some sugar? Like one of them, the senior resident was like, here's a Twix. And then the intern was like, here's like a breakfast nutrition waffle it was like a chocolate covered waffle and I was like it's okay the twist is fine they still gave me both I'm like drink water it's okay like don't worry about it and so I love that because I definitely was like oh the doctor is not gonna want me to go in there to see another circ and they were like it's fine just before the next time make sure you drink enough water and explain that to her like you just dehydrate drink a lot, a lot of water and it'd be fine this was the residence last day so they did give us some feedback and she said that like I've improved on giving my presentation and just to work on not using medical jargon because I asked like anybody in your family had neonatal jaundice like that's not a common term so when she corrected me yesterday today I said has anyone as a baby needed to, to go under blue light because they lost their color because the baby was yellow so just constantly working on that and working on improving and it was great because she thought I was at the end of my third year and was like yeah like y'all are really good it seems like you're ready for fourth year and I'm like me well I still have four rotations left but so shout out to me and all the work I've been putting in and so let me put that work in and go study because my test is next Friday so yeah today was actually a very good day I love that for me see I'm not gonna pass out today full breakfast now let's see if I got enough time to actually all right, we have made it to Friday. Oh my gosh, is it raining? Jesus, what the heck? It was not raining when I left the house. But we have made it to Friday. Y'all, I had a dream that I had just gone to bed and then my real life alarm went off and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. It felt like I hadn't slept at all and I was just like, high key disturbed. But we're here, we're doing it. Last day of the week. I had wrote a tweet saying how I was struggling with getting up at five o'clock in the morning and getting to work at 6.30. I don't know how I'm gonna survive on my surgery rotation. Most people were very helpful. Something that I found to be extremely helpful was to set an alarm to go to bed. And I was like, how come I never thought about that? And go to bed at the same time every night. Yes, that I knew. Lay out your clothes at night. I do that sometimes, sometimes I don't. I kind of fell off this week because it was just throwing me off but having workout clothes essentially or lounge clothes today and then make your food the night before i usually do all these things but i haven't been doing them so i'm gonna do it next week and i'm gonna do it for next two rotations which should be internal medicine and surgery so yeah let's get it but let's cheers to another day in the newborn nursery I'm gonna have new babies because all my babies were supposedly discharged yesterday we'll see if one did not get discharged and we will go from there happy friday y'all so, um, we had a change of service with our residents today. <laughs> this new set, baby. <laughs> the senior is so funny. We were talking about Beyonce and Taylor Swift, y'all. I was hollering. But um, we're doing things a little bit differently. We aren't rounding as a team. He's taking us one by one into the rooms, which people are saying is good with feedback. And yeah, so i just been working on my note. I'm gonna be the last student to go in with him. And then I guess we'll get feedback from him before the attending comes in and then we all wrap together. It's Friday. I have a write-up session with a doctor at noon instead of noon didactics where she's gonna tell us how our um, note-taking has been going, how to submit a patient case, de-identified, of course. And yeah, then after that, I'm trying to present a case to another resident so he could give me some feedback and evaluation. Yeah, this will be my first rotation that I'm honoring. I'm claiming it. Happy Friday again, y'all. Also, look at the video. All right, I just did my evaluations with like the feedback session with the physician I was with for the whole week, and she was basically like, Yeah, I could tell like you've improved from your first presentations in the orient I mean, on the orientation, Lord Jesus, in the rotation. And like, she wanted to see me take that next step of actually interpreting results and stuff. Like if I see any abnormal vital signs, like to just talk about it, like, what does that mean? Did that happen right after they were born or overnight? Like was baby struggling to breathe, something like that. So that was pretty cool. And our residents changed as well. And this new set, they are so funny. Like, I don't know what I'd be doing to the girls, but the girls be loving me. And I love that for who? Me. Now let me go into this session. Okay. 
So, let's get this camera right. That was me being on the phone with one of the residents from my second week of this rotation when I was on the pediatric intensive care unit, so PICU. And we didn't have any patients, only one patient on that Monday and the M4 who was on their sub internship. Got to present that patient and at the end of the week, I asked the resident to evaluate me and he was just like, honestly, there's nothing to evaluate you on. Like you were great with coming in and asking questions, but we didn't have any patients. So ask the program director if you can present a case to me and we'll just do that and I'm over here like I sent him a case and I'm looking up stuff and trying to write up a, a soap note subjective objective assessment and plan I get on that phone and it was just like all right yeah I like the case that you sent me and he just started asking me questions presenting all right this is a 10 year old female presenting to the ED due to sickle cell crises they have chest pain um, a fever shortness of breath what's the first thing you gonna do and I'm like okay so I was like all right first thing obviously is the uh, taking a past medical history how many times has this happened before how long has this been going on for are you up to date on your meds at home like are you taking them what's going on I actually I like that better than what I anticipated it to be because I'm over here trying to write something down and thinking of things like oh what do I say because I never got to see a sickle cell patient even though when I was in the ED last week we did have a patient but that patient came in on the shift before me and I wasn't on shift so I wasn't directly on their care team but it was pretty cool um luckily I had used my case files book so I had read up like they give you about two pages of a clinical approach so I knew some of the things it's like okay so on physical exam you hear or like you hear like consolidation in the lungs and I was like all right so is it the whole right lung or is it just a, a part of the lung he was like oh the lower right lobe I'm like all right so that's a differential for pneumonia or acute chest syndrome so he was like oh my gosh yeah that's great okay so what medication are you gonna give them so that was pretty cool you know to be able to flex a little bit of my medical knowledge and I did not have to remind their resident to fill out my um, evaluation. They were just like, okay, I still have the link and I will do that for you now. So I'm like, all right, shout out to you. I'm about to jump into a study group, but I think I'm gonna end this vlog right here because that was such a great way. Like I'm thriving. Also got evaluations earlier today for mid clerkship or like end of clerkship now. And someone submitted an evaluation saying that Vicky presents like she is ready for her fourth year. And I'm just like, check me out, baby. Three rotations in and y'all telling me, I'm presenting at the level of a fourth year because I work hard for this. This is my element, this is my vibe. This is my zone, this is my time. And yeah, the attending, the other attending, I think I told y'all about her earlier. So like, yeah, this is indeed a great Friday. It was sunny when I left the house, but it's a little bit cloudy now, but it's joy and sunshine in my heart. All right, catch y'all next week. Pray for me. My exam is coming up and we're looking to honor. Let this be the first rotation that I honor. So let's get to it. Bye y'all.